Lift off in three, two, one. Charlotte Doherty. Did I pronounce that right? You did. You did. Okay, because I know Doherty's, but you're a Doherty. It's Doherty, yeah. Doherty. I'm so proud of myself. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, as previously mentioned, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad we get to talk, and I'm uh, hopeful that over the next hour or so, I get to know you a little better, so I find your story fascinating and what you've been able to do much more fascinating. Um, the name Doherty has, uh, 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 remember, reminds, reminds me of uh, a person that has become family to me, but her name is Doherty. Mm -hmm. And she's the person that helps care for my second oldest son, who oh. developmentally delayed, yes. I mentioned. Yeah. And he's been part of the uh, uh, North Bay Regional mm -hmm system for a long time and so it's funny that you're a Doherty and that's a Doherty and that's probably the only reason I know how to the only reason why I know how to pronounce the mm -hmm. difference in those two names um, but I, I, I got to meet you so I, let me tell you how we, we why we're here how, how this whole thing happened because I don't know that you know mm -hmm. this whole thing started because uh, less than a year ago, right before Thanksgiving, I was sick and tired of feeling exhaustedly sick and tired, very overweight, closer to 300 pounds. Uh, this is like eight months ago, wow. nine months ago. Um, just stress after COVID, all these things. And, and I went into a doctor's appointment and the doctor says, huh, your blood pressure is unusually high. Why don't you come back tomorrow? because you you might just be nervous that you're at the doctor's office. And I said, okay, I'll be back tomorrow and we'll get that checked out. But they had just put me on the scale and I was over 280 pounds at that point. And I think I'd already started to lose some weight. And I knew I wasn't coming back the next day to get my blood pressure checked. Yeah. Because I kind of know intellectually where that's headed i know the next day i'm going to come back and they're going to put me on blood pressure medication mm -hmm. because when you're that overweight it's easy to figure out that you probably have high blood pressure you're probably pre-diabetic you probably have some of those things and i finally said it's time to do something so the reason i'm sharing all that backstory mm -hmm. with you is because then that led me into a path of like you, I'm a survivor of, yeah. of a lot of things. Mm. Um, some things we share in common, I'm sure. Um, but I decided at that point that it was time to do something. And doing something has put me into this new way of eating and new way of um, surrounding myself with different people, uh, different environment, and things that have led to me being approached by people that are already doing that, are like-minded thinkers, and uh, and want to spend time with me, which is I find surprising too. Yeah. I'm like, wow, that's kind of nice that they want to spend. And one of those people was Sue, oh, because lady. isn't she? So Sue is somebody that they called me. Not they. Their realtor called me. Uh, some years ago because they were selling their property. Mm -hmm. And when they were selling their property, their property had a, I think it had a foundation issue. Mm -hmm. And their agent, who's a good friend of mine, called me and said, Jerry, can you come here and see what we can do to help them sell this property? I'm really coming up against a wall and trying to help this property move because of that foundation disclosure that they have to do. Mm -hmm. They're gonna, it's, it's, it's creating a problem. So I went over there and, and this and that. and. Uh, fortunately for me, I have a resource of a person that does a lot of the cement work out in Yosemite and knows how to work properties oh. built on slopes. He knows how to correct foundation defects and things like that. And that resource alone was able to get sued, I think, make the repairs that were needed. And she got the property sold and then she moved over to Shasta mm -hmm. when she moved to Shasta. Um, the reason I share that with you is because when I walked through Sue's house, First, I noticed Tony was in really good shape. Mm -hmm. um, 
But then I noticed that Sue, besides being in really good shape as well, the way that when I she toured, she let me tour the house like, you know, I'm a real estate broker. Yeah. She, she's showing me around. And I saw that there was a room. I think it was kind of a living room or a living space, a large area, all inside the house designated to working out. Mm -hmm. And I found that fascinating because most people put that in the garage or they'll put that in a bedroom. But in her case, it was like front and center. And it wasn't like it just sat there empty. It's like this room really gets used by these people. Yeah. Because you can not, not only see them physically, you, you can not, not only see that in their physical being, you can see that emotionally. That they're just different. Yeah. There's something different about their energy. There's a little light... Uh, lightness and how they kind of care even through challenging things like the foundation on the house mm -hmm. and it, it was just fascinating so she was so gracious she sent me a, a super large um uh gift card to a to a to a real high-end restaurant and i didn't expect anything and i thought well wow, that was so gracious and then we became friends over facebook and i get to watch what they do and the hikes and all this and that but little did i know that she was watching what i did and that's how she talked to uh, that realtor, David, who's still close friends with them, mm -hmm. I think was over to their house. They were sharing a meal together and David knows what I'm doing. They were talking about what I'm doing. And then she reached out to me and she says, hey, you know, I would I'd like to talk to you about several things. But one of the primary reasons is also to talk about you. Mm -hmm. And I found that fascinating, too. Uh -huh. Uh, to make a long story short, um, she's invited me over to her house. We're going to go for a run because there's a trail in her backyard now. Yes. So I'm going to go for a run with her on Friday. My wife and I are going to go over. And then she's going to make us breakfast. And we're going to spend two, three hours together. And, and I never would have imagined that life was going to take us in that direction mm -hmm. from the time I was at her place, let's say, two, three years ago to me being at a place where I find myself sometimes running eight or ten miles in a day and and or going on these big hikes and doing some of the things and feeling as good as I'm feeling because she was some type of inspiration mm -hmm. that, that happened so long ago. So fast forward to her telling me about you. Um, not only did she tell me about you, she invited me to come over and visit your ranch. So Spirit Horse Ranch. Um, the last word is... It, Spirit Horse Therapeutic Writing Center. Spirit Horse Therapeutic Writing Center. Yeah. So that, that encapsulates what I saw there, which was uh, fascinating to me. But what even became more fascinating was you and your story and how you got there. You built a nonprofit. Um, that's really from where from where I stand is doing some pretty amazing things. I wish you would have been there when my son uh, started with North Bay when he yeah. was two three years old. But back then there weren't resources like that. Right. You know, a kid with developmental issues and things like that, and you know, suffering from grand mal seizures that were some of the worst things that we'd ever seen. And things like that, uh, to have a place to go and be able to uh, get that type of therapy was not even, I mean, not even in existence. So I, I just I just found a lot of things about us coming together really fascinating. So I want to find a way in my own, in my own way and capacity to, to just kind of help you spread the word as much as possible and and get as involved as I can get to, to just help you help you as much as I can. I, I did find something in, in the article that they wrote in, inside this publication mm -hmm. about you and, and your granddaughter's on the cover. And boy, what a both of those kids are amazing. They're so different. <laughs> those two girls are so different. Yeah. The one that I was talking to, she told me she's six years old. Aubrey. Aubrey. Mm -hmm. She acts like she's 26. Yeah, yeah she's... Uh... She's the social butterfly. And then Triel on the cover, Yes, she's eight years old. Yeah. And she is uh, one with the horse. Yes, definitely. And that's all she cares to do. But she's still outgoing and, and very very eloquent in, in how mm -hmm. she talks and all that. So one is the salesperson. <laughs> yeah. 
And one is the one just making the magic happen with the horses. Yes. The other one likes to think that she's making the magic happen yeah. with the horses, but it's really... <laughs> And and, yeah. and her name is Triel. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah, I found them both fascinating and in, in, in very different ways. Yeah. Uh, impressive. Um, these are your granddaughters mm-hmm. that also you care for. Yes. Yes. I've um, had Triel with me <clears throat> since she was a year old, and Aubrey has been with me since she is three. With Aubrey, uh, my daughter has been in and out of the house um, with her, but. Uh, And actually, my daughter is back now. Um, It's been, you know, a lot of struggles um, there. But my daughter has now been back for about a month now. Um, And I'm I'm super excited about it because she's actually really being present. And I feel really doing a good job being there right now. Um, And so it's been a huge struggle, you know, I don't know if we want to talk about my, you know, I do. background. I, I do. How if you, if you want to go into yeah. that, I, I do. But from a, I know there's I, so much. Well, you know, consider that you're talking to somebody who's even though my story is different because we're all unique. Yeah. Um, again, no judgment. You know, yeah. I dropped out of school in the 10th grade. I left home when I was 15 years old. I lived in the streets of Miami to them live, live in the streets of New York City to having to figure things out that were rough. Yeah. Um, so I was exposed to drugs. I was exposed to a lot of things. Um, so I, I would like just from the place of Helping anybody that may be listening mm-hmm. to this, helping them understand what you've overcome. That's the place that I want to yes. hit this from because it, 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 your past is your past. My past yeah. is my past. And we've, we've overcome a lot. I'm so excited that you're here doing what you're doing now. Your mission is so much bigger than all of us that that's really what I want to mm-hmm. highlight. Yeah. And I've never done this type of interview before. So I want to tread delicately okay is that fair okay yeah 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 for sure yeah um so maybe maybe tell me you grew up in northern california mm-hmm. you grew up in vallejo i grew up in vallejo parents yes. uh, um i was raised by my mother and then my stepdad um my mother was uh <clears throat> not you know like educated or anything like that it was it was a weird combination yeah. my stepdad was a lot older than her he was uh you know captain of the Vallejo fire department he was really big in creating the union back in the late 60s wow. so um i had this really different <laughs> kind of uh upbringing um i did go through uh trauma in uh, abuse in my childhood also but horses was my main thing that I just was I just loved I loved horses so I grew up riding horses so um, when you say and again I'm not gonna yeah, dive no. I'm not gonna dive in but when you say trauma how old uh, about like three four so yeah three four years old yeah yeah okay. three or four years old in um, you know just you know, sexual abuse. Uh, My mom was, she was pretty, not by my mom, but she was, you know, pretty tough lady. You know, she was a cowgirl herself. Yeah. yeah. Um, And, but I just kind of, you know, you push things like that aside and you don't deal with them. And I just was like so involved in horses and that is what really, you know, kept me centered. And then uh, I did road English, I rode Western, I did rodeo. Um, As a little girl. Yeah, uh, I did high school rodeo right here in Napa. That was yeah. really big when I was a teenager. Yeah. Um, I would wound up becoming a rodeo queen wow. um, for Russian River. What age was that? Uh, I was 15. Wow. Yeah, um, and then uh, I just got to, uh, my mom was, although I love the horses so much, she was very much like she rode through me so in a sense as i got to be an older teenager uh, and she was very strict she um 
it, it became more of a, you know, I wanted to do things that other kids did, you know, and it, it, and so it kind of came a battle, like, you know, I had to do this with my horses. She never like let up. Mm -hmm. And so at that point I just kind of rebelled. Okay. And, um, <clears throat> here I was like, I, I didn't know anything about drugs or, or nothing like that. And I just rebelled and just went full right. force into mm -hmm. that lifestyle. And I understand from reading that, you know, I'm from Miami. So, yeah. you know, the drug of choice in Miami when I was a kid was cocaine because yeah. that's what yeah. was available. Yeah. yeah. I, I understand crystal meth was a big thing here in Napa. Yeah. yeah. Back in those days, it was, and I, it and, might and still cocaine, be. And cocaine. And cocaine And cocaine also. also. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so it, you know, it was, it, it was both, Yeah. you know, for me. And I just, you know, when, yeah. Yeah. that, that's what I did, you know, yeah. and I, and I, uh, it's, it's kind of emotional, but I let go of, you know, my, my riding and the horses and stuff. And I just, I just went straight into that lifestyle and, um, it still it still makes me upset now that I did that because um, I felt like that was really my calling, you know, as a teenager. That's that's what. But on the other hand, you know, I wouldn't be who I am today without it. You know, I, I would so. have to, well, from what I read on your bio and and in the article, those are the things that kind of grabbed me was. That nothing, uh, none of that has defined who you are. Right, right. And, uh, yeah. and, that's, and that's why it's actually why I wanted to go ahead and share my yeah, story like yeah, this. Because yeah. I want to be an inspiration yeah. to anybody that's out there and gets, you know, on the wrong path in life. Yeah. in you know, using drugs and stuff. You can change. Yeah. You know, you can, no matter what. And um, it's funny you talk about uh, Florida because uh, I, I did run uh, out of California and, uh, and I went to Florida and I thought, okay, I'm going to get my life together yeah. and um, I'm going to sit there and get away from drugs, right? Yeah. Well... They find, moved out there. They find you. Yep, they oh, did. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. they uh, a coke dealer moved in oh, right next course. door. Right next door. Of course. And so, <laughs> of course. you know, so fast forward to you know October second, two thousand and nine. That's when I I changed my life, mm -hmm. and got off drugs and just took yeah. a different path. And and that's why I, I sat there and I know I'm kind of going back and forth, that's but I, I sat there and it like. It didn't matter. I got clean in a house where it was okay for, in my mom's house, where it was okay for people to use. Yeah. And um, I was, yeah. it didn't matter because I already knew that I went all the way across the whole United States. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if you're, you know, willing to change your life, it doesn't matter where you are, you know, you can do it. Yeah, the decision know? is yours. Exactly. It's only yours. Exactly. So, yeah, that, um, I, I, Going back to when uh, I was a teenager and, and started down that path, I um, got pregnant with my daughter when I was 20 and um, cleaned up, obviously, yeah. you know, and uh, uh, had her, but her dad, you know, he was, you know, very actively using at that time. And so as soon as I had her, I went back, you know, to that lifestyle and... Um, then when she was about four years old, I, um, I cleaned up again and left him and, you know, I knew I had to do something different, yeah. you know, and then I fell off again though, you know, you know, never, you know, the, one of the biggest things that I, I always talk about is like, there's so many things, so many times I was hurt, you know, and, but when you have that mentality of I'm a victim mm. and you use that as an excuse to use drugs you know well I'm, I'm a victim you know poor me mm. you know that's uh, that that was one of the things that always made me relapse 
was that mentality, you know, and what changed and what changed from that place to it's so, you know, uh, the last time that, uh, I got locked up in, um, and that was on October 2nd, 2009, I, I was just like, this just doesn't work for me. You know, this just doesn't work for me. Um, I was through the courts, um, sent to an outpatient program and, um, it, it was funny because I had already been, when I got out, I was like, this is it. I can't do this no more. I started going to NA meetings mm-hmm. and, you know, doing recovery. And I'd been doing that for about a year. And then the courts, you know, they were like, okay, well, we're going to now sit there and you're going to have to do an outpatient program. I was so mad. I was mad about it because I was like, I'm already doing, you know, all this stuff that I should be doing. Why do I have to do that? Mm-hmm. And, um, they were like, nope, this is what you have to do. And I'll tell you what, that outpatient program that I went to, it saved my life. That's the one. That's the one that I learned that, you know, be a Just therapist. when you thought you had this. That just when I thought you I had, had the, it. Yeah. Just when I thought, I've been doing that, I have this. Yeah. It saved my life because um, one thing that was so huge to me in there is that um, everybody else feels the same way. I felt like I, there's something wrong with me. I'm the only person that feels mm-hmm. all these things, you know, that, you know, this addiction, this, all this stuff that takes over my mind, you know, and all mm-hmm. this stuff. Like I thought I'm the only one, I'm different, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it, the, the counselor in there, she sat there and she taught me that, no, there's nothing special about yeah. me. We yeah. all suffer that, yeah. you know, and yeah. it was after completing that program that I was able to be like, no, this, you know, and, and it, it just kind of went from there that I just kept building myself. And, you know, the whole time I was living at my mom's and, you know, there it was okay. So, and she, it, my mother wasn't an addict. Huh. She wasn't, which is really strange, but um, she let people, you know, use in her house and she didn't support me. And me being clean, she she would always be like, "Oh, you know, you're being a, you know, a, a bitch or whatever." And here, go here's some money. Go get go get high, yeah. And so, I s- stayed there, and you know, because I I couldn't go anywhere else, you know, and yeah. I didn't have nothing. Yeah. And um, she's a little bit of an enabler. She was totally, yeah. and um, but I sat there and and powered through that and did not, you know, ever give in. So I understand you did about three years. One of the runs was a three-year run. In, in prison, yeah. That was, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was, oh boy. And that was that a culmination of multiple things, multiple charges? Yes. or mm-hmm. it was. Yeah, it everything was Everything came to a head? Yep, it was, it was, you know. And all, you know, having to do with drugs yeah. and, and stuff. And, um, and that, I actually went on the run when I went to Florida. I was on the run from, from that. that for uh about six years oh wow yeah and that was the most stressful thing ever you know um constantly looking over your shoulder oh my gosh yeah you can't live that way Uh, i wouldn't suggest that to anybody yeah it's not a good idea (laughs) no um but uh when i came back and so like me you know yeah i live that lifestyle and stuff but Mm -hmm. i'm not this you know hardcore you know person that's going to beat people up and stuff so you can imagine i was petrified to go to prison i was so scared like oh my gosh i was so scared Um, so for what i read about your time in was that correct me if i'm wrong that that was a time you had plenty of time to reflect huh yes yes and and you know it was, uh, I was able to sit there and really look at how selfish I had been. And I think a lot of people that, you know, are, you know, in their addiction and stuff, they don't realize how selfish that is to the people yeah. that love you. Yeah. You know? Yeah, when, and, when people are in that, in the throes of that is blaming and deflecting. Is, yes. Uh, owning is not where you're at at that point. Owning right. only starts in recovery, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. And so... That was when I was um, able to be like, oh my gosh, yeah. you know, what a horrible mother I've been. Um, 
and and that's when I was really able to sit there and you know be like okay this is you know it was the start of the process of me you know really uh getting my life together unfortunately I I got out of prison I was out for a year I wound up relapsing Mm -hmm. um and then that is in how uh a year later I wound up going um to jail what year was that uh that was in well I went to jail in two October 2nd 2009 that was the day that I changed my life and never looked back but that was the three years that you did the, no I I went in 2005 oh and then you did three years and then okay, yeah you got mm-hmm. it and then 2009 yeah. was when you made the decision yeah. mm-hmm. this yeah. just can't go this, on this can't this can't you know just this just doesn't work for me yeah. you know it yeah. just doesn't work for me at all um, and so at that point I, I changed my life in um, in what way in the way that I just sat there and knew I could never, ever use drugs again. Like, that just, you know, yeah. and I did the outpatient program, yeah. um, that stuff, and I just kept going in the right direction. And, uh, you know, I had, all, I, I'll go back a minute. So, so like, I always loved teaching. Yeah. And so, you know, as, as uh, a girl, when I was, like, you know, 11, 12 13 years old, you know, I always loved teaching other kids how to ride horses. And I always wanted um, to have a program. It was so weird because even when I was that young, I wanted to have a program mainly for like uh, other uh, girls that had been abused and had, you know, suffered some type of trauma. I just wanted this program like that. Can you pause on that for a second? Yes. So I'm really curious. From that last time when you got out and you said, I'm done with this, I can't be, you probably did a lot of work on your environment, who you hung out with. I mean, you probably cleaned house of a lot of people. Had to. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes even people that are very close to you have to go. Yes. Uh, So that comes with a lot of pain and and emotion and, and, and reflection. So from that moment, how do you start putting the wheels back on the cart? I mean, getting a job, doing those things. What what did that look like? So so what that looked like for me is so I've always been a house cleaner. Yeah. That's kind of like I even you know I did it's that your in fall Florida. Back. You can, that's can, that's yeah. what I've always done. Yeah, um, but I I knew that so I, that's what I was doing. I was I was uh, started cleaning houses again, mm-hmm. um, and then I knew that I wanted so bad to. Uh, you know, work at a therapeutic. Oh, let me, oh God, let me turn back a little bit. So, uh, I was taking care of, a a childhood friend of mine, me and my ex-boyfriend. And he, um, he had, uh, AIDS Mm -hmm. and, uh, he sat there and his, his sister had rode horses with my mom and he lived out on a ranch in Benicia that the whole family did. Mm -hmm. And, his sister had asked my mom if I could come over and sit with him because he was in a wheelchair, but they didn't tell me what was wrong. I didn't know what was wrong with him. And so I, I go over there and I see him. What year was this? Um, had to be, well, so this, it was in 2009. 2009. Um, and uh, I, I go over there and I'm, I see him, Kenny, you know, I hadn't seen him in a long time and sat there with him. And so I went over there a few times, right, and watched him. Um, Cause here he is in a wheelchair and stuff, you know. And um, I th- then asked, you know, they want to stay there, uh, me and my uh, ex boyfriend, and, and take care of him. And um, was talking to him, and I thought he had cancer, you know. And then it came out that you know he had AIDS, and it was kind of a a really sad story because he had got clean. Mm-hmm. And he had been clean for about nine years and then working successful and everything. And then he started having these seizures and he kept going to the hospital and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with them. Well, and then they finally tested him. And at that point, he'd, uh, it was so far advanced that, um, you know, there wasn't nothing wow. that they could do but just meds and stuff. And so, yeah, so at that point, taking care of him. And I don't ever feel like I was a nurse type kind of a person like that would have mm-hmm. been my mm-hmm. career. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was able to care for him. And we did some stuff like where 
I'd take some of the horses and get him to go outside because he hadn't been outside in like years and um, just use the horses to get him outside and stuff. And at that, so when all that happened, I, I was like, oh God, I, you know, think I want to work at a therapeutic writing program. That's what opened and up. that's what opened that up wow. for me, that. Um, of course, though, I went back and forth because once I found out that, that on the application, when you do a volunteer application, are you a felon? Yeah. And so for me, I was so ashamed of my past, you know, at that point. Now I can embrace it a bit, but at that point I was so embarrassed by it. Do you felt find do you, do you find that a lot of people that have traveled a similar path, that's kind of the crossroad and that's the one that they can't overcome and that's the point where they relapse because I could be, yeah. Because For, I, because you feel like you just can't can't get through it. Th yeah, that they and so I went, I'm telling you, so I was doing NA meetings, right? And I was and I'm telling you, it was a whole year and I talked about it all the time in you. the meetings. It like saved you. And they would be, just go, Save just you. go mm -hmm. and go to a volunteer orientation. And, put yourself out there. And put yourself out there. And I would just be like, oh, I can't. You know, I just so. But I wound up doing it over at Giant Steps in Petaluma. Yeah. And um, I went over there and uh, and I was, of course, so embarrassed. You know, like, oh, God, I got to write that on there. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to turn it in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to them on the side. Yeah. when I'm done and they were just like so that moment must have been just nirvana it, it was that moment they must were have been oh my gosh they were like oh fuck we love uh, to have you here your experience your horse experience is yeah phenomenal we don't get people with yeah. your kind of experience here you probably just uh you're you're Fucking oxygen must have just. Been I like, I I'm like oh my gosh so this is oh my god this was it right so yeah. at that point I'm there right and so they they immediately bring me in they sit there uh -huh. and they're like you know but I'm your a history volunteer. but your history with horses is phenomenal well, well, yeah too, yeah right so, that's undeniable right right right, right. right. And, and so they sat there and they um they paid for me to become a certified instructor wow what a door and you know I. One thing people don't really realize, though, is you don't make, uh, no. you can't support yourself no. on being a no. therapeutic writing no. instructor. But, uh, and so I'm there for a year, right? And, I, and I'm and i working over there and I'm volunteering, you know, and I'm cleaning houses to try to get enough gas money to even get over there because I didn't have somebody that could help me financially like that. You know, yeah. my mom, she was, she was the poor kind of, yeah. you know. And, um, and so I'm going over there and stuff and then I'm telling everybody. So my mom had one horse. Right, and I'm telling everybody, oh, I'm gonna open my own program now because when I was in prison, and it's funny, a lot of people that I'm friends with on Facebook, you know, they're like, I remember when you were in prison, you saying you were gonna have a program, and, and so it just all kind of came together. So I'm at Giant Steps, I'm telling them all, oh, yeah, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna open my own nonprofit because, you know, I'm naive. Everybody's going to want to help me because I want to, you know, help kids, you know, under-resourced kids, at-risk youth. But the lesson, I think, it's everything <laughs> Everything starts with a dream. Yeah, and so... And, and, and I'll tell you, sometimes ignorance is bliss. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Not but, knowing any better is what gets you there. Right, and, I, and I'm like, oh, you yes. know, and, and, you know, it's it's funny because um, I just I just kept doing it. Yeah. And I want to, every time I was like... I, I don't have the means. I don't have the gas money to go out there. I kept, they kept people, um, in 2012, I actually wound up getting my nonprofit number. And then people would like use me for the number for donations to build their place up their ranch. And then, you know, I, oh, well, yeah, you got to pay us all this money. And, yeah, you know, so, okay, I read that somewhere. And I was, what did you mean by that? That people would try to use so, you. Yeah. As for, a way for, for them to get a leg up. Yes. How does that, what did that mean? So like, so, you know, if you have a nonprofit and you have the, you can give a tax donation. So they go to like wood places. Oh, well, you know, could we get this stuff donated? Oh. You know, thinking it was for spirit oh. horse because that's what it was supposed to be for. Oh, so people right? would just literally like. Yeah. Leverage your. Yes. Uh, 503C. C, yes. 503C, they would leverage that. 501C3, Yeah. 501c3 because they knew you 
they would just say, yeah, I'm part of this, this is for that, and it had nothing to do with you. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was supposed to be, but they used it to benefit themselves. Themselves, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so um, one, we finally, you know, there were, so there were so many times, like, you know, it was so tough. You know, but that was the fir- you had a you, you had a first nonprofit, right? Or did no, no, it's no. always been spirit. It, it's well, I, I, I didn't. It wasn't a nonprofit. It was just you know a name I had called, okay. which okay. was a lot okay. of horseplay. Got it. Um, a lot of horseplay. That's a what lot I mean. of horseplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty so, cute. Yeah, um, and so yeah, it it just and then in 2015, you know, we wound up getting the place there in American Canyon from the city, a developer out there. Was I was going to ask you how that happened yeah, because it's pretty perfect. Yeah, he he went, you know, like with me to the city and because I don't know anything like right. how to do that kind of stuff, sure. you know. And they they let me uh, lease the property out there, which was just nothing but a yeah. field. Well, I remember. I think it's by the paintball place. We yeah. used to paintball yeah. out there when my kids yeah. were little. Yeah. Still going on. I think yep. they're still paintballing it's, out yeah, there. Yeah, it sure is. How do the horses do with the paintballing? Yeah, they're, doesn't they're bother fun. them? Yeah. No, they get used to it. Yeah. Is the rent reasonable? Very. Very reasonable? Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. Really? I, okay. I couldn't ask okay. that. Super, super that's wonderful a long-term uh, lease no so nothing oh, is talk to me about that yeah so nothing is um is set like we don't have anything it's always been just kind of okay year to year okay um but now at this point you know and there were times when um you know they weren't gonna have me stay out there and stuff but you know it's it's come to the point now you know where you know uh, the city of American Canyon is very supportive of wow. Spirit Horse, wow. you know, and loves us being there wow. and, you know, loves what I do out there and how I've developed it yeah. and stuff. So what what would you say? I mean, I, when I walk through there, I understand you have a lot of volunteers. Mm-hmm. Uh, it takes a lot of people to keep oh, that going. Uh, yeah. You have 60 plus classes yeah, a, a week. Yeah, a week. Yeah. Um, that's a ton. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you, so do you have other certified people that come give classes? How does that work? No, no, you don't have to have. No, okay. So I'm always there. I oversee. Yeah. So uh, the therapeutic writing yes. is uh, where I always have a, a PATH certified yeah. instructor there. So I'm PATH certified. Got it. Um, and so I'm always there overseeing that. It's really tough. Yeah. to get a uh, path certified it's professional association of therapeutic horsemanship okay and um it's really hard to get instructors because once again um you know it's not a great living so let me not so i'm i put a i, I put a uh, break in the chain here yeah. so yeah. i want to go back to where you said okay I'm out of here. I'm not doing this again. I'm moving forward. I know what mm-hmm. I want to do. Yeah. I get certified. I end up in Petaluma. They they actually pay for my certification. Now I'm going forward. I understand you were using your mom's horse yes, to yeah. do some therapy for a while. Yeah. Yes, that's what I did. Uh, it was a quarter horse named Nikki. Uh-huh. And so I started with her, um, one horse and one free lesson a week. That's what, what you I started. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah. And what from there? What? How did that lead on to more horses? And... Uh, it just you know it just kept growing. Yeah. You know it it just kept growing. Yeah. So mainly you know I had no money, so it would be like you know looking for uh, you know people that wanted to donate a horse or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then I just everybody um, kept calling me crazy because I had no money whatsoever and when I would just have nothing I would be like okay I have to do more free things so I was always doing free things so but you know you do know that that is crazy in some way right <laughs> I, know, yeah, I know I know I mean I know. to anybody else yeah. that would be crazy and I always say but that's why most people get what they get because they're not you yeah yeah you know yeah, it, it takes it takes a certain amount of crazy to do something spectacular I mean it's just yeah so that's what I did I just you know would sit there and do like oh my gosh I'm so broke oh my gosh I have to I have to do 
more. So yeah. like, you know, community yeah. events and stuff like oh, that, wow. you know, so th that's what I would do or I would do another free writing lesson. And um, how did you now are you are you involved in some type of horse rescue or with some type of horse rescue or how to no. or that you just kind of put it out there. And if there's a horse. Oh, yeah, yeah. There. Yeah. And, and there's always horses that need a home. Right. 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 So um, Cause I, I find that fascinating that you're not you know you're not you're not wasting resources right right you know rather than go get you know a quarter you know a quarter horse or something yeah. like that you can save a horse and save a human yes at the same time yes yes so i find that fascinating yeah, yeah. so well, we do have all quarter horses <laughs> oh sorry <laughs> i know I, I know about this much yeah, about no, horses no, no, that, that's yeah. fine that's okay. fine um but what i do is i take uh so I have really nice horses. Yeah, I beautiful. Take, yeah, I have horses that um, could were performance horses, so they're trained really oh, well. Wow. But due to an injury or something, they can't be on that level where they'd be at shows and in training five days a week, you know, to that extent. Hmm. So what I do is I'll take a horse like that if it has the right, you know, personality, temperament, yeah. and you know, as long as I can get the horse yeah. comfortable enough that we can use it in the program, yeah. because all of the horses do have to be able to earn their keep. Oh, of course. It's so expensive. Of it's course. like, oh my gosh, yeah. you know, it's the horses are so expensive. Yeah. Um, so that that's what I do. And so through like, you know, therapeutic shoeing, yeah. through supplements, um, stuff like that, that's how I use them. When did you... Um, when did North Bay get involved? Uh, North Bay got involved uh, a couple of years ago. For those people that don't know what North Bay is, I only know, again, because of yeah. my child with yeah. disabilities, but North Bay is a resource center for people that have, uh, for people that have disabilities, yes. adults and children. Yes, yes. Um, they've been instrumental in the success of my family's um, life because you know the the resources that were afforded to us yeah which a lot of those resources have gone yeah you know i mean we used to get we used to get child care child care three to five days a week every other weekend our kids would go spend the night yeah at the, i mean it was different yeah. time yeah they've yeah. cut way back on all of that now but they still i mean they're still in high high demand and super needed yes so yes. it's nice that you're connected with them and then you are able to um, to funnel people yeah. into your program that way, and you don't have to go out there looking for people. They right. can actually. How's that going? It's it's going great. And so what happened is, I think it's probably about a year and a half ago. North Bay changed, so it's always been to where um, you could be a vendor for North Bay, but you had to be some type of a doctor. Or, Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Uh, some type of a therapist, you know, physical therapist or something like that, mental therapist. Um, and what they did about a year and a half ago, and there were there were so many parents that were like, "Hey, but we know what our child needs. Yeah. Why can't we choose the kind of therapy? You know. So that's how we were able to become uh, a vendor for them because, wow. and then the parents, you know, can choose. Mm -hmm. to use spirit horse because everybody knows mm -hmm. you know that you know for a lot of kids and adults horses are this amazing thing that's just magical magical and um and it gets you know the them to focus and to relax and you know so the parents finally get to choose what works for them because before they had to pay you know if they wanted to have horse uh back riding for their uh, kids. That's super expensive. Yeah, they, you know, and so um, it was so, it's it's amazing that, that they did that. And that's all the regional centers in California wow. went to that. So that's, yeah. I, I wish that, you know, I had, uh, you know, more instructors, more therapeutic instructors so that we could do more because we're wait list only um, for our therapeutic lessons. So that was my next question to you was going to be, um, what are what are some of the things you feel your organization needs at this point? Was it more horses? Uh, was it more help? Or now you're saying instructors? Is it the instructors <laughs> it, the number one thing? De right now? Definitely, yeah, instructors 
for sure. You know, and then, you know, financially, you know. And financial I, help. Yeah. The, the financial is is probably the biggest thing because, yeah. you know, with that, then, you know, maybe you can send an instructor to become certified oh, for I that. You. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's just, you know, running a, a nonprofit, it's, it's super tough the financial end of it, especially with horses. You have know? you have you guys started doing any type of uh, like annual event or something like yeah, that? Yeah, we did. And uh, Rotary yeah. uh, of, of Napa, they, like you know, they stepped up and, and they have um, sat there and they, they did that big fundraiser for us. And I believe that's going to be a yearly thing now. That's huge. Yeah. Um, did it they help? They have been amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. For yeah, sure, yeah. and they've just got it to where I've gotten a lot of publicity yeah. from that. You know, I always think, oh, everybody knows what Spirit Horse is, you know, right. but yeah. you know, a lot most people in Napa didn't, you know. Wow. So it's definitely, I feel like it's definitely opened up some doors, and you know, people have been coming out and you know wanting to know my story and the story of how the program came about. What do you think? What's the next? Uh, what's the next? What's in your horizon? What do you? Next what do you? Step. What do you see? What do you see next for Charlotte in this journey? Oh boy, I don't know. Just um, well, I I would love to be able to you know keep developing, you know the the program out there. You know, there's so much work that needs to go into the property. You know, and that's where a lot of everything gets ate up with that. You know, and, and one of the things is because lots of times the stories are very personal of the people that come out there, you know. Um, there's a, a boy that I have, uh, I sponsor a lot of different kids out there for for free. Mm-hmm. And, um, but he, he was raised by his grandmother and she, he's 13 and she was, um, she was an addict also. Mm-hmm. But that was... You know, I guess she was a good grandmother. Mm-hmm. And she passed away recently. Mm. And um, he was just out there uh, on Sunday. And he's now living with his mom. That is not a good situation for him. And he was sitting there and he was like, my life. Like, you know, he, was, he had like tears in his eyes. And I was like, you know what? I go... Well, I was, I was like, you're going to be strong because for one thing, you know that you're not going to raise your kids when you have kids when you're older. Mm -hmm. So you're going to take a different path and you're learning to be strong now. So when you get older and things, you know, are thrown up in your face, you're going to know how to handle them because you're not going to give up. You know, I go, I want you to understand for everybody, you know, life isn't rainbows and unicorns, you know, and, um, he sat there and, and I told him, you know, he, he knows my story, you know, and I told him, I go, I go, I use my pain as my strength. And I go, that's, you use your pain and everything you're going through as your strength to do better. And you will be successful when you get older. You know, don't let this define you, you know. And he just, you know, he sat there and he just hugged me. Yeah. And he said, thank you. He goes, I just want a normal family. I was like, oh, oh yeah. gosh, you know. But the fact that you can give time for that moment to happen is so right. cool. Yeah, so, you so know, there's cool. so many stories like that, you know. Yeah. But, like, it's hard to put them out there because, yeah. you know, you don't want someone to see it and be like, oh, God, I know who she's talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, you got to be so, careful. So. Yeah. But, yeah. So I, you know, I'm trying to, at least starting with this, trying to figure out how, how I can help and, and how I can help you raise some funds and how I can help you uh, with time and I can help you maybe with some uh, uh, a little bit of business structuring and things like that. I would that. love that. So, I, I yeah. appreciate, you know, yeah. any help. Yeah, I have, um, a, I have an amazing uh, accountant that, that, okay. that has a son with Down syndrome. Uh-huh. Also in North Bay. Oh, nice. And I want her to meet you. And, and, yeah. and I want to, yeah, I think, you know, I, I, I'm fortunate enough to be, to have gone through the mud, yeah. to be in a place where I have pretty amazing people around me. Yeah, I love that. And I want to 
just open up whatever I have over to you and 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 even through my social media and all that anything mm-hmm. that I can do I'm gonna do it and and it's uh Thank you. yeah I'd love for that to I'd love for that to grow and, yeah. and continue to grow beyond your years and mine yeah for that, sure I think that's probably what somebody like you would want yeah definitely yeah it's, definitely. It, it's just your legacy that 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 just be amazing yep. yeah yep. definitely definitely yeah, that would be so cool yeah for sure thank you for your time this has yeah. been I don't want to say it's my favorite interview so far because <laughs> it might upset the people before you but <laughs> but this is up there man mm-hmm. this is yeah. a good one yeah. thank you so much you're well, welcome I want to uh also want to uh, share a little bit. I have another business also. Bring it. I have a health and wellness business. Let's talk um, about that. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's charlottedoherty.lifevantage.com. Mm-hmm. And um, do you know what oxidative stress is? No, but I feel you like don't. I should. I feel like I should. Really? Mm-hmm. So oxidative stress is the uh, basically the rusting of your body inside, mm-hmm. you know, as we get older. Um, and I'll, I will send you the videos of. And you these and I are the products. same age. I, I thought you're younger. No, I was born in '66. Oh, you are younger. I was born in '65. Okay. <laughs> That's still the same age to me. Yeah. Yeah, we're not, hey, yeah. To other so, show, he's like, right? He's yeah. like, boy, you guys are old. <laughs> <We're ancient. Yeah. laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, and so um, it's it's a product called Protandum, mm. and ABC Primetime they actually uh, went in John. Oh, how do you pronounce his last name? It starts with a Q, Quinoa else. Um, but he went in and he was like, okay, I'm going to debunk this product. That's mm-hmm. what they did, right? Yeah, yeah. And he went in there and it actually, um, when he came back, it was his oxidative stress was reduced by 40% mm. in 30 days. So oxidative stress causes high blood pressure diabetes like all of the things that go wrong with us Mm -hmm. is what oxidative stress um i I have a meeting coming up with my doctor actually we're staying at the true north health center in santa rosa nice which is amazing wellness center oh yeah so we're going to stay there and i'll I'll bring up oxidative stress because they're going to look at our blood they're going to look at susan's and, and and see if there's something there, but I'll talk yeah. to you more about that Def- for sure. Definitely, for definitely, sure. yeah. Oxidative it's stress, yeah, oxidative that definitely. Oxidative stress. Oxi- I'll send you the videos. That's cool. So you can watch the videos. That's cool. And you know, definitely share them with your doctor. That's cool. Um, yeah, it's a collagen also. That's cool. Um, and it's it's crazy, like Very if you good. do the comparisons on it. So, I love yeah. it. I love it. Well, you know that I eat, I eat SOS free, so it means I, I don't eat sugar oil for almost a year. No sugar, no oil, no salt, no caffeine. No, oh, that you no know what, alcohol. Because I yeah. was there. No at meat Sue's products. Yesterday. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so all my 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 blood should look pretty good. Yeah. Pretty amazing. But I want to hear. I want to learn about oxidative because I I have never heard of it. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised. Yeah. yeah. Uh, ask yeah. ask your doctor, and you can also uh, search it on PubMed.gov. Okay. You know, that's like the government thing. Yeah, no, so yeah. I love it. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. It's a joy. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you. (laughs)